This video is brought to you in collaboration with wowhead.com. Hello everyone. Last week we began our siege upon Sudamar, where we ended up with our troops frozen in time and our spy on the inside, Lilith, she should have warned us about this, but she did not. There's been no word from her in some time, this cannot be a coincidence, and now we need to go out and investigate what exactly happened to her. Only the most vigilant scryers could have detected her message, and Felistra believes that the only spot possible to do this from would be the Terrace of Enlightenment. The Duskwatch must have set up listening post there, so we check the scrying orbs for traces of Lila's message. Felistra, I hope this message finds you well. I have just come from an emergency council regarding the Horde and Alliance forces amassing outside Suramar. Elisand has appointed a new first Arcanist, a dreadful woman named Andaris. Together they are working on a massive enchantment to break the siege. An attack on the main gate is ill-advised, but there may be another way. Andaris has dispatched her Arcanists to the Sanctum of Order. It seems there is some kind of breach that runs beneath the Nightwell and into the palace itself. They are trying to seal it, but I am sure you can find a way to... Someone's coming. Who are you? Wait! Unhand me! How dare you! Do you know who I am? Lilith appears to be taken captive, but before they took her, she was able to send out a vital piece of information. We must investigate this breach she spoke of immediately. Over here! I sense energies converging below, but aggressive guardians bar my way. I need you to clear a path. Very efficient! Let us get a closer look. Say, this is impressive spell work. A mana bore, perhaps? Huh. Nothing. This requires a great deal of power to maintain. It is not attached to the Nightwell, but to the Ley Lines. Yet we control them, so... How can she... Ah, yes. I see. The Nightwell is so overloaded that they could not spare anything for this seal. Instead, they are borrowing powers from the Ley Lines. Now, Voltois, she has traced one of their power sources to Kelbalor, so that's our next destination to figure out how best to disable this barrier. Ah, you have arrived. I expected to find something here, but. This Ley Line is being leached, but I cannot see. Wait! I have an idea. Huh. A clever cloaking spell, but what is that device? Keep watch. Hmm. They are redirecting a portion of the Ley Line's power directly to the Sanctum of Order. I am hesitant to take any action at this point. I will return to Shalaran and continue my research. Our assaults on the front gates couldn't have gone any worse, but there's still hope. Valtois will do some more research as to how we're going to lower the shield, and now we also know why Lilith wasn't sending any more sweet messages. Week number 8. We distribute the latest batch of the Arakandor fruits, and then a new message waits for us, but sadly, it's not from Lilith. Poor Thalysra. You try so hard to save your people, yet you cut them off from the one thing that can restore them. I fear Lilith shall pay the price for your arrogance. Let us test the metal of your rebellion. Send your best to face me at Lilith's estate before I bring in more citizens for questioning. Be careful who you trust. I will take the teleporter to the estate and bring our most powerful withered. Meet me there. Elisande made you first, Arcanist? The pickings must have been slim indeed. Release Lilith now. Ha! <laughs> this is what you bring. An outlander and a pack of mindless mana-starved corpses. You have fallen on hard times indeed. I'll show you what these corpses can do. Attack! As if I would bother with facing you myself. Felborn, kill them. The Withered, defeated so easily by fell magic. Please, save those you can. My wounds are of no concern. 
the newly appointed first arcanist. This Andaris, she's dangerous, and all the hours to be spent guiding our wither through the collapsed tunnels of Felanar, they seem to be for nothing. They are weak to fell magic, something that our enemy has in abundance. So after saving a few of the terrified citizens, it's time to get back to some training and come up with alternative tactics. Oculus has a plan which requires specific coordinates to allow him to focus his teleportation with extreme accuracy, so we go about following the shiny light and doing some readings. While he shifts through the data that we gathered, Felistra sends us out with the wither into fell soul hold. The fell crystals anchor the legion's power here. We should see what the withered can do against them. We toss some of the mana onto the fell crystals, which lures the withered into trying to devour it. Getting in touch with the fell, it deals incredible amounts of damage to them. You can almost hear them scream in torment, but their addiction, it pushes them on, pushes them through the pain as they devour all that delicious fell magic. I've seen enough. I believe I can dampen the effect of fell magic on the withered. Go to the Soul Engine, and I will send new subjects your way. That worked even better than expected. I shall continue to refine my work for the next step. Those poor, poor withereds. Well, in the meantime, Oculus, he has another job for us. In order to advance his studies, he will need a bit of equipment from his workshop. Four discarded orbs and some telemancy notes, they're brought back, and now the fun can begin. In the next test, Felistra sends us out to fight with some Felborn, who begun to expand their grass beyond the city's reach. Their outpost leader, Valtis Amaran, he serves on Darius directly, and now is the perfect time to put our Wither training and Oculus devices to the test. With the readings that we've gathered, with the equipment that we gathered, and the additional fell resistance added to our Withered, we're now able to throw out Pokeballs and call upon them at will. No longer does the fell magic one-shot them, and we've gained a new powerful tool for our arsenal. The telemancy orbs are working perfectly! <laughs> Uh, best we keep this quiet until we're ready for the real push. Week number 9, the last week and another piece of fruit to hand out. Valtrois, she's finished the research and she's come up with a plan. There are several key arcway locations throughout Surumar that harness the power that they need for the Sanctum's energy barrier. We're sent out to these locations with an energy disruptor and by placing them while avoiding the enemies and the traps within the area, we're able to remotely break the link simultaneously, causing the barrier to fall. Oculus will teleport us into the breach and then it's up to us to secure the area. Now we won't be alone though, we have our telemancy orbs to back us up in case that anything goes wrong. Very well, I shall begin. When I am finished, all the devices we have adjusted will cease working. It is done. The barrier should be down. I will open the portal. The element of surprise will be in your favor. If anything goes wrong, have your withered at the ready. Good luck, hero. My spell! What just happened? You think we didn't notice your skullduggery? Your old tricks are no match for true sorcery. I don't know how they co-opted my spell. It, it shouldn't be... We have prepared for the possibility of discovery. With the telemancy orbs and the fell-resistant withered, you have the tools required to secure the breach. Die, Outlander! It seems you are unable to enter. Find the power source for that barrier and take it down. We there. are chosen Those casters to rule. are using generators to shield the Sanctum. Eliminate them! Training those withered scum. How distasteful. Dalian, defend the entrance. Slay my foes. Now that Andaris' dog is put down, you should have access to the building. Get to the breach. You'll go no further! I'll die before I allow you entrance to the Nighthold! Andaris has made a critical mistake. Her shield is vulnerable to the Withered. Drop some in a safe spot and they will leech the magic in her shield. WE ARE CHOSEN TO RULE! MORE WITHERED TRICKS! I SHALL NOT FAIL, Elisand. YOU WILL FALL! And Daris is our last obstacle in the road towards the Nighthold. Now she has gone way into the fell magic, but thankfully our withered are now far more prepared than ever before, and together we are able to put her down and clear the way. And Daris was the key to their defenses. 
Talamancy is working inside the Sanctum again. I'm sending Thalissa and Khadgar to your location. With her finest arcanist dead, Over here. I doubt Elisand will send reinforcements. We have the breach. Follow me. I can sense the Nightwell from here. Elisand must truly be desperate to overload the Nightwell like this. Once we break the time lock holding our forces, Gul'dan will fall. The Wizard won't last long in their hero. Gather an elite group of champions to fight your way through. I'm sure you're familiar with such tactics. We'll be right behind you, of course. As we speak, Gul'dan is using the Nightwell's power to pull Sargeras into our worlds. They've separated Illidan's soul from his body, ready to be a vessel for the Dark Titan, and they possess the final pillar of creation that we need in order to shut the gateway at the tomb of Sargeras. Valistra and all those that have joined the rebellion, they've worked very hard, have sacrificed so much to put a stop to all of this, and now it's up to us to get our allies, venture forth, and defeat anything and everything that the Nighthold has in store. Now a big thank you to Savage and his guild scrubs from Silvermoon EU for being my allies in all of this and carry my butt through the night holds. If you're looking to join a fun guild with lots of friendly people, then make sure to check out the link to the website in the description down below. With our allies gathered, the journey into the night hold can begin and we start at the very bottom with a couple of scorpions here and there until we find the big daddy of the place. What madmen thought to infuse this creature with the Nightwell's power? Have a care. If this abomination was created to protect lower reaches of the citadel from invaders, it must be particularly deadly. Deep within the foundations of the Nighthold, beneath the sea lie long forgotten vaults that give access to the Nightwell itself. This monster's armored scorpion has made its home in one of these vaults, and in order to move forward, we'll have to put him down, and we do just that. This is a momentous day, my friends. Until the Legion came, no outsider was permitted inside the corridors of the Nighthold for 10,000 years. Now the fate of my people rests in the hands of outsiders, all of you, to save us from the terrible bargain made by our queen. Shannar Dalaras! I have no idea how such an entity came to be, but the essence of the Nightwell is surging through it. Tendrils of power are emanating from the aberration. I believe Elisand is using this creature to maintain the Time Lock spell. In order to free our allies at the gate, this monstrosity must be destroyed. At the base of the Nightwell, we find a maelstrom of raw energy as the power to fuel an entire civilization courses from the Earth. From this chaos, the chronomatic anomaly was born, an embodiment of the powers from the Eye of Amon Fool. This being holds the power over time, which is not that strange considering that the Bronze Dragon Nostormu, the aspect of time, he was also empowered by Amon Fool. My time. Come. Despite time being against us, we're still able to defeat this creature and we free our allies on the outside from the spell that keeps them frozen in time. The time lock is broken! They are free! No doubt our forces will be disoriented. I will inform them what happened and see that they make ready to resume our assault. From here, we can open up the gates from the inside and gain access to the palace grounds, but we do have one obstacle in our way, namely Triliax. This construct was once a proud servant of the Nightborn that has a bit of trouble with picking his personality. The master has returned. We must ensure the household is immaculate. That's not the master, imbecile. Unless he managed to claw his way out from under two tons of solid stone. That would be impressive, considering I still have his hands in a jar. Please, don't say such things. The master is back and things need to be kept tidy. And the first time that I heard this dialogue, I actually thought that there were more discarded servants in the area. But nope, all these voices are coming from Triliax himself. Some of you also asked me if the master that he's talking about, if we know who this is, but sadly, I couldn't find any information. It seems like he's been discarded here for quite some time, and the switch on his core labeled personality setting, that one has eroded away completely, explaining why he goes from insane to homicidal sterilizer, back to the doting caretaker. His master's demise was probably by his hands, and as we fight him, we try not to drop too much blood on his clean floors, and we politely decline his murderous cakes until the construct falls. Pain is an effective teacher, and I endeavor to learn your lesson, master. The palace grounds are just ahead. You'll find them even more heavily defended than the lower levels. 
we move up the stairs into the night hold, with the citizens crying out in fear at the sight of us as the outsiders. It's a shame that they don't allow outsiders into the city, since it looks absolutely gorgeous. And once the area is cleared, it's time to fight Spellblade Aluriel, captain of the Magistrix Guard. I let you strike first, and that's the best you can do? Aluriel had always had an affinity for magic and a natural talent with the sword, which allowed her to rise through the ranks of the Night Guard without any effort. Yet no matter how strong she became, she always wanted more. Her weapons and armor, they were forged into Nightwell itself, magical spells weaved into the precious metals. She is the first spellblade who conquered the schools of fire, frost and arcane, and she uses all that knowledge and skill against us. Inconceivable! I am the best. With her death, our forces move further in, well happy with us doing the hard work, as we make our way through the Night Spire onto the Shattered Walkway, and this is the bridge that used to connect Sudomar to the Temple of Alun, or as most know it as today, the Tomb of Sargeras. There we see Felweaver Faramir, Chaos Mage Balleron, and Summoner Ziv hard at work at making the waters around us deadly and green. They're using their fell magic to restore Croesus, the one who was called upon by Gul'dan to smite Tyrion Fordring and nearly end his life. Come then, meet your end. The combined might of the Alliance on Horde were able to force Croesus to retreat, but that's been quite a while now and the Doom Lord is ready for round two. The gigantic monster not only uses his mastery over fell against us, he also chips away the very ground that we're standing on. I will shatter your world! Now that's simply not fair, but thankfully he's not smart enough to immediately destroy all of the bridge, send us all to our fell watery graves, and this gives us enough time to defeat him and avenge Tyrion Fordring. Azeroth must that was for Tyrion Fordring, monster. Grossus may not have struck the killing blow, but he played a part in our great champion's fall. The image of Khadgar is kind enough to give us a boost back up into the Nighthold, and he senses that Gul'dan's ritual is growing in power, so we must hurry. We move back into the area where we defeated Aluriel, and there we find our missing agent, there we find Lyleth. Ah, oh, free at last. Thank you, Outlander. I told Aluriel you would come to rescue me, and she merely laughed. Well, who is laughing now? And that's it. She's been missing for weeks, who knows what happened to her, but she doesn't really seem troubled by it. She just thanks us for rescuing her, and then she walks away. At least she doesn't suddenly switch sides or mysteriously finds a weapon. What can you do? Let's move on into the captain's quarters, where the Dreadlord Tychondrius awaits. Incompetent mortal filth. These Nightborn can't even defend their own palace from invasion, if it were up to me. Ah, but I suppose we will reward our allies soon enough. Until then, I'll amuse myself by cleaning up their mess. Tychondrius, leader of the Nafrezim, he was slain during the War of the Ancients by Hulun High Mountain, only to be sent back to the Twisting Nether, reform and make a return during Warcraft 3. He was sent over by Kiel Jaden to keep an eye on Arthas and Azul the Lich King to make sure that their plans would come to fruition. They were successful in summoning Archimond into the world, who figured that the Lich King was of no use to them anymore, and he handed over leadership of the Scourge to Tychondrius. This allowed the Lich King to put his own plans in motion, since he wasn't too happy with serving the Legion. Arthas was sent over to inform Illidan about the Skull of Gul'dan, our Gul'dan, a powerful artifact which was being used to corrupt their forests. With its power, Illidan was able to banish Tychondrius from their lands, but again, Again, this was merely a setback as they send them back to the Twisting Nether. With the latest invasion of Azeroth, the Dreadlord returned once more to burn this world to a husk and ensure that alternate Gul'dan that he does not once again fail his masters. Underlings, get in here! Not even the aid of the incompetent mortal filth is enough to stand against us, and I assume that the Lord of the Nafrezim that he's once again going to spend some time recovering in the Twisting Nether. But I was supposed to win! We go back outside, through the area where we defeated Aluriel, into the Astromancer's Rise, probably one of the most beautiful fights, and also one of the more interesting ones. If only you knew what lay beyond. Star Agur Atreus is an Astromancer that has spent many years of research scouring the skies of Azeroth, searching for the answers to the great mysteries of the universe. His crying has shown a world beyond our understanding. Such insolence. Very well. I shall show you. See for yourself the cruel frozen void that lies beyond the margin of Azeroth's skies! 
the powers of the night well. It allowed him to draw upon the essence of these worlds to amplify his powers. And we start off with a frozen planet, which lies beyond the margin of Azeroth's skies. I was wondering if this planet was supposed to be Azeroth or not, since we don't see any recognizable maelstrom that we know from the globes that we see all over the place, but it does seem to have the same moons as Azeroth does. Perhaps it's just a planet nearby, I have no idea, but the second one is a little bit easier to decipher. The Burning Legion, slayers of whole worlds. Could we hope to resist? Can you? This is a planet, like so many, that has been conquered by the Legion. But let's not forget why Sargeras decided to form the Burning Legion and start his Burning Crusade in the first place. The stars have judged. Is that not enough? Must I show you the true horror of our reality? Very well. Witness what I have seen and tremble! Avatars of non-existence, knowing nothing but hunger. These are the beings who will devour the future you so futilely fight to protect. The third and final planet, it shows one taken over by the Void Lords and their minions, the Old Gods. The Void Lords, they seek to twist reality into a realm of eternal torment. They were envious of the Titans' power, who were going about bringing life and order to the universe, and they sought to make them into an instrument of their will. They found that they were unable to corrupt the Titans, so they figured that they'd just attack them while they were still vulnerable, while they were still slumbering as a world soul. From the Void, they send out the Old Gods to infect the planets, and once Sargeras found out about their plans, he knew that action had to be taken. If the powers of the Void were successful in corrupting a slumbering titan, it would awaken as an unspeakable dark creature. No power in creation, not even that of the Pantheon, could stand against it. In time, this warped titan would consume all matter and energy in the universe, bringing every mode of existence under the Void Lord's will. Sargeras recruited the demons into his legion, with the mission of burning away all creation. Only then could the titan stand a chance at stopping the Void Lords. In Sargeras' mind, even a lifeless universe was better than one dominated by the Void. Life had taken root in the cosmos before, perhaps after they scoured it of its corruption, life would take root once again. Now as you probably know, Azeroth itself is also infected with the old gods and it also has a slumbering world soul. This is part of the reason why our planet is such a target for the Legion. Now there's more to be said here, especially when it comes to speculation for what might the future bring, but I want to dedicate a video for that later on this week, hopefully on Wednesday, where I'll go further in to the hints that we have so far and speculate a little bit about the future. Do not think. The future will be so easy. We leave the Eternal Observatory behind, and we're moving into a different part of the Nighthold, the Sheldurai Terrace. Suramar owes its beauty to my blooms. I alone have mastered the delicate intertwining of magic into nature's grand cycle. Not much shocking that I can say about Talarn, he's been fascinated by plant life ever since he was a young nightborn, and with the aid of the energies from the Nightwell, he's transformed himself into a plant, something that he considers to be far, far greater than being an elf. Throughout the fight, he splits up into different parts, eventually ending up with a nature side, a solar side, and his arcanist side. Some of you did ask why exactly we fight him, and that's because their strongest mages and the warriors, they must fall before we can hope to face Gul'dan. Basically, he's an ally of Alessand, and therefore he has to die. A bitter harvest. We backtrack into the area where we came from, into the Night Spire, and now that we've secured the lower areas, it's time to take the portal up and confront Grand Magistrate Alessand herself. I foresaw your coming, of course. The threads of fate that led you to this place. Your desperate attempt to stop the Legion. My people faced a similar dilemma. I peered into all possible futures in search of an answer. And found only one. The Legion's victory is inevitable. Every time stream shows it to be so. Had we resisted, they would have taken the night well by force and left us bereft of it. I could not allow my people to starve, to waste away without its energy sustaining us. So a bargain was struck. Now I see a future where the Legion is victorious and my people endure. This is the thread that must be preserved. I will do everything in my power to make it so. Your deaths ensure the future of the Nightborn. Come forward then. Let us speed you towards your fate. 
With the powers of the Nightwell at her side, Elisande has control over time and she uses her energy to stop the flow of time for everyone but herself. She then sends us back in time, resetting the fight before she's killed, but this does drain her energy significantly, so it's not something that she's able to keep up for very long. Time shifts again and your doom draws near. Where once Elisande resisted the Legion and stepped away from the Queen of Jorah, now her scrying has showed her that joining the Legion was the only way. She has seen a future where the Legion wins and her people endure, but you have to wonder how exactly that works out, considering that Tychondrius, he was planning on rewarding their allies soon enough. You might think that she'd see reason before it's too late, see that now we have the Arkandor and the force to fight back, that now is the time to switch sides. Unfortunately, she clings to the future that has been shown and we have to bring her down. It's... Not possible. I... I was destined to win. In all the possible futures I scribe, I did not foresee one in which you were victorious. I wonder, will you defeat the Legion? Will you fail? Time eddies about you in fits and starts. Nothing is certain. Perhaps you will win have to admit, her fortune telling skills could definitely use some work, would have prevented a lot of problems. The echo of Elisande gives us her support as we take one final portal into the font of night where the last boss awaits. Now a quick heads up, naturally I am going to talk about the final encounter of the Nighthold, but I'm also going to tell you what happens on mythic mode, so be warned, there are some spoilers ahead. Ah uh, yes, the heroes have arrived. So persistent, so confident, but your arrogance will be your undoing. Have you forgotten your humiliation on the broken shore? How your precious High King was bent and broken before me? Will you beg for your lives as he did? whimpering like some worthless dog. Have you forgotten your humiliation on the broken shore? How your mighty war chief was stuck in the belly like a helpless piglet? Will you die slowly as he did, consumed by fell corruption and squealing for a merciful end. Your pathetic alliance will fall to dust. Your new boy king will bow down and serve me, as will all of you. Your pathetic horde will fall to dust. In the end, death will inherit this world, and she will be waiting. The husk of Illidan will prove an ideal vessel for my master's glory. Sargeras will rise, and together we will watch your world burn. Let the end game begin. What began with our Garrosh being sent to Alternate Draenor has now come to its climax here at the top of the Nighthold. Gul'dan locks himself in the Eye of Amon Fool. He's working on a ritual to use the powers of the Nightwell and bring Sargeras into Azeroth. We fight against his minions and upon their defeat, the Warlock decides to indulge himself a little bit and face us himself. You failed, heroes. The ritual is upon us. But first... I'll indulge myself a bit and finish you. A taste of the master's might. Being close to the eye, it gives us great power as well. It speeds up our relative time, which is sadly removed by taking fire damage. I will not fail you, master. More power. Just need more power. Despite the Warlock giving it all he has and more, the Orc is unable to finish us as quickly as he would like. No more distractions. I have work to do. Surrender! 
I may yet show mercy. A rift opens up, the sky is torn asunder, and Gul'dan tries to bring the Dark Titan into our world, but we've come prepared. Time to return the Demon Hunter's soul to his body, and deny the Legion's master a host. We've collected Illidan's soul from Helheim itself, which was plucked from the Nether and taken to the Underworld, which we then place within Light's heart, and Archmage Khedgar, he uses it to release Illidan's soul back into his body. On normal and heroic mode, that's all there is to it, you defeat Gul'dan and the raid ends, but on mythic mode, something special happens. You topple a pawn and presume to challenge its master? Such arrogance! You are not! Prepared! Now it's not 100% clear, different sources say different things, I've even read about Pedia that it's the Dark Titan itself that shows up, but I didn't find anything to support that claim. There is a screenshot, I think from the PTR, which says that an outworldly presence was filling Illidan's mortal shell, and that the consequences of Khadgar's actions, the inside deadly consequences. My interpretation is that Asenov, the demon within Illidan, either made his own way back into his body, or he came with the soul that we collected in Helheim. This is the demon that provides such great power to Illidan. The demon that Illidan, like all the other demon hunters, has to constantly keep under control. That one now makes an appearance, and it takes the full might of our forces to bring it down. He will yet claim this titan. This is the reason why I don't believe it's actually Sargeras inside of Illidan's body, since it makes more sense that by he, the demon means Sargeras, and claim this titan, there will be Azeroth and the slumbering titan inside. Now that's the mythic part, which obviously I haven't done myself, so here we still have Gul'dan to defeat. Gul'dan, Lord of the Shadow Council, darkness incarnate, is brought low. I am Gul'dan. I am darkness incarnate. It cannot end like this. Illidan's soul is returned to his body, and remember the lies that the warlock told about Varian. It's time for sweet, sweet justice. <laughs> Illidan has finally returned, the summoning of Sargeras has failed, and the last pillar of creation, the Eye of Amunful, it is now in our possession, which means that we hold all the keys to shut the Legion Gateway at the Tomb of Sargeras. This one is a little bit larger than the other pillars of creation, so we can't really put it on a pedestal, so instead Khedgar just teleports it into the city, and he places Eyes of the Kirentor as a symbol for the actual pillar. The Nightborn have been liberated from the Legion's influence, and now that they no longer have the Eye of Amunful, the very thing that they used to create the Nightwell to begin with, a choice will have to be made. The Nightwell. I thought I would never see it again. It is dying. Without the Eye of Amandul, the Nightwell has become unstable. We could stabilize it. We no longer need the Nightwell to sustain us, but we can still harness its power. The Lysra. It is your call. Let it die. We must put the Nightwell behind us. We must take responsibility for our failings and repay our debt to the people of Azeroth. They turn their back on the incredible powers of the Well, and they bravely look towards a new future, one not dictated by this source of power. 
This is where the story of the Nighthold ends, and unfortunately nobody really talks to you. There's no real dialogue hinting at what's to come. Despite that, our next destination is clear. We're going to return where we failed miserably, and we're going to fight our way through the two Masageras, and eventually, hopefully, seal off that gateway. If you want some more details, related articles, or browse this information at your own time, check out the link to the related Wowed article in the description down below. Thank you so very much for watching everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya! Be careful who you trust.